this is Mark Hoskey for Control Engineering. We're now in close proximity to the Design and Manufacturing Midwest Show, running from September 22nd to the 24th in Rosemont, Illinois, near Chicago. The plan is to provide a brief tutorial video on discrete sensors by looking at some recently introduced sensors for manufacturing. Co-located shows here this week include the Assembly Technology Expo, Electronics Midwest, Quality Expo, Green Manufacturing Expo, Medical Design and Manufacturing Midwest. We're going to skip registration though because you're with me and I've pre-registered. So we're here at the Balif booth with Tom Rosenberg, Director of Marketing at Balif, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the self-contained through beam sensors and why uh, setup is so much easier. Tom? Yeah, thank you, Mark. Um, what we're showing here is our UltraFrame line of self-contained through beams. Uh, what, we're, what we're able to do is give uh, one piece unit that has an emitter receiver that's very powerful, very reliable. We give it to you in one piece unit so it's pre-aligned, uh, ready to go out of the box. Uh, they come in C-frame versions, uh, probably our, 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 our most uh, popular version. They come in the 45 degree version for uh, devices coming at different angles. Uh, we have some rugged versions, and we also have a, a complete frame version where we can pass parts uh, directly through it. Again, this is a pre-aligned, self-contained through beam. Very good for replacing troublesome fiber optics, things like that. Now, there's a different design of light sources with these various sensors, right? Absolutely. Uh, that's true, Mark. Uh, uh, what we're able to do is use uh, visible red, which is very popular. People like to see the beam. Uh, there are times when you need more precision, and so we offer uh, a pinpoint. Uh, and for even greater precision, down to micron level, we offer laser uh, type uh, applications. Now there are those times when there's a lot of dirt and oil and things like that, and you really need some power and burn through that. We're able to offer infrared as well. Now are those four light sources available in each of the four designs? But for the most part, yes. They're available in the C-frame and the 45 degree. For the heavy duty, we only really do that in, in, in the uh, IR, the uh, uh, infrared. And we do only IR in the frame because they're used for some, some high, um, uh, uh, dirty environments as well. So for this kind of non-contact uh, sensing, uh, what are some of the applications that these different designs might address? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, the C-frame is, is used a lot, again, for replacing fiber optics that may be seen on a feeder bowl. If you see a feeder bowl, uh, uh, the tracks, uh, the feed track coming out of a feeder bowl, uh, they're used there. Uh, they're used in grippers. We see a lot of them in grippers, especially the 45-degree version. Uh, we see it in there. Uh, and we also see it right in conveying lines. Uh, again, the 45 degree, I'll show you an application here in the booth. We can kind of see how they're, they're able to, uh, to be used primarily for all applications. What we're saying is this is the go-to sensor rather than a standard point and shoot style, which can get dirty over time and, rely, and uh, you know, maybe different range based on color. Here, this is immune to color, immune to dirt, those kind of things. So you've got an application right here in the booth. Yes, we do. I can show you that in our, uh, our battery manufacturing. All right. Yeah. All right, so Tom is going to show us a little bit about how these uh, C-frame sensors work. Right here we can see we're detecting the battery being on its build pallet. Here we can see the 45-degree version. It's light beam casts in, in a parallel fashion, so it cuts the beam. As soon as the beam is broken, we fire the stop station to hold it in, in station uh, while the other pieces go through and through their processes. So, again, this is an area where we're able to use a through beam uh, without reaching to the other side. Typically, a through beam may be like this. But we left it clean over here and using a 45 degree beam going across to detect that battery being present and located correctly on the pallet. And the advantage of uh, having this kind of setup as opposed to a full through beam, uh, easier setup? Much easier setup. Uh, uh, also, with otherwise, you'd have two pieces to hook up. If you had a normal through beam, you'd have to align something here, align something there. Uh, it's, it's, anything can get damaged or bumped. Here it's all pre aligned, uh, set up, and, uh, and it's ready to go. So it's all about higher reliability. Exactly. Higher reliability, exactly, by using a through beam and a single unit package. Great. Thanks very much, Tom. Thank you, Mark. So we're here at the Banner Engineering booth. We have Aaron Bigger, who is the senior application engineer with Banner Engineering. He's going to talk us a little bit about the World Beam sensor line. Aaron? Uh, this line consists of three package sizes. Uh, the Q12 uh, is our small uh, package size uh, for tight locations. Uh, replaces a lot of fiber optics, very common for that, where you, you still get more power uh, and range typically than as compared to a fiber optic. Uh, this right here is a fixed field mode, which basically will give you a fixed range uh, made to sense any object within that range uh, and yet ignore background objects. Very, very good performer. 
Uh, we move up to the QS18 is the next line. Uh, it consists of both laser and LED uh, light sources. Uh, the visible red light source is very common along these lines. It makes alignment very, uh, very simple. Um, right here, the adjustable feel is a very popular unit. It uh, has an adjustment here which adjusts, again, that, that background uh, suppression cutoff. So it provides very good uh, gain and power within the sensing range, and you can ignore uh, background objects as well. Uh, last but not least, the QS30 family. A larger package, which gives you more, more uh, horsepower, more range uh, compared to the smaller sensors. Could you talk a little bit about the range for each one? Yep. Typically, uh, you know, range for something like this in a proximity mode is going to be two to three inches. You get to the QS18 in a proximity mode, you're, you're talking more along uh, maybe 12 inches, one foot. Uh, this kind of package, you can get you know, three, four feet of range uh, pretty easily. They do come in the retro-reflective and opposed mode as well, where uh, either with a reflector or a receiver you can get you know, much more range. And in general, uh, setup is quite a bit easier than it used to be, right? Setup is much easier as it used to be. Uh, typically these are going to either have a potentiometer. In the case of a fixed field, there's actually no adjustment. So the fixed field mode in general, very popular with OEMs uh, because there's no adjustment uh, needed really and no adjustment for, for operators to uh, get their hands in and, <laughs> and make uh, adjustments. Uh, some of these do have a teach mode as well. You have push buttons on the back. We've standardized on a, on a push button uh, teach procedure for all of our products, so it's consistent across all product lines, uh, which, you know, for, again, that ease of use, most of these are a single push button where you either teach the, the target or teach the background, um, and it kind of sets itself up magically based on that single single condition that you've taught in. Now so, part of the idea of having the, the world beam sensor line is to address what, 80% of all, all applications? Right, we're, we're basically trying to take a catalog that's an, uh, an inch thick and, and narrow it down to uh, a couple pages of, of proven technology that, uh, that, that works. So that means a lot less in the stock room? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and there are some specialty sensors within this line as well. This particular one actually senses the, the presence of water. So it uses a, uh, a high frequency uh, infrared light source to, uh, to detect water in clear bottles. So there is some unique solutions built into this family as well. But, uh, but for the most part, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna, this is going to be the place to start. Could you talk when, a little bit about price versus performance? Sure. Um, typically here, uh, you know, we start, this Q20 is one I didn't mention that's part of the World Beam. Very universal housing. Uh, you'll see many different manufacturers that have that same footprint. Um, that, from a, from a value standpoint, is, is, uh, is certainly going to give, all these products going to give you the, the best bang for the buck, uh, certainly. But um, certainly the price has, has come down on these, um, as well as the technology has improved performance. So it's, it's a good time to, to be shopping for a photoelectric sensor, I guess. Great, thank you. So for the latest in sensing technologies, check back regularly to the Sensors Channel on Control Engineering's website, www.controleng.com. This has been Mark Hosky for Control Engineering, a read business information technology video.